Hey guys, Gordy Roth again. Okay, so today we have a set of heads off of 78 BMW R100 and the customer wanted the heads dual plugged. So, as you can see, this has been accomplished. And um, the th you have to grind the threads off right here because um, otherwise if you leave the little sharp edges on the threads, they will um, cause detonation. So you don't want that. But um, what I did to do that was um, just took a spark plug that is on this side. If you don't put a time certain in it and put a sleeve under the time cert, you have to use a short reach plug, which is a H. If it's a NGK, it'll end in HS. Um, what I did was where the threads stop right here. I machined it off so that I had a little guide. So that when I screw it in there, I can tell exactly where to start. Stupid camera, focus. There it goes. You can see where I ground the threads off to. And see, they still look perfect above it. I just ground them off so that they wouldn't cause detonation. And my way for doing this is on my milling machine, on my brand new fancy huge Kurt Vice, I put, these are just regular old 5 sixteenths, or I'm sorry, 3 8 SAE Allen head bolts and I turned the heads of them down to fit inside the two center cylinder head bolt holes right here and right here because they're exactly in line with the spark plug holes and I left my fixture on there and indicated into my fixture then put the cylinder head on there and then put a spark plug tap in this this hole right here and um, used an indicator and centered up on the spark plug hole and uh, it um, it's within two tenths of a thousandth of being absolutely in line so the way you do this is is you get your fixture all made and I have another bolt hole made in the fixture that holds it down by this and um, you use your existing spark plug hole and I'll demonstrate all this later, but I'm just showing you the rough concept right now, so you don't have to watch the whole video if you want to know sort of how to do this. Your other spark plug hole here, you need the head sitting so this is parallel with the spindle of your machine. So I just put a spark plug tap in there and then used a rod in my spindle that is straight and match them up to one another so that they were sitting parallel next to one another. You can hold a flashlight behind it and see that it's actually not letting in any light, which is about as straight as you're going to get it. And this doesn't have to be just like super duper critical. If you're within a couple thousandths of being exactly where the spark plug hole should be, you're fine. You're fine. So um, what you do is you get your plate bolted down and angled to this correct angle. And then once you do that, you... Uh, you center up on the tap and then lock your table and then I have a stare at edge finder and a center finder and I use the center finder on the back of the tap to center up on this and then once I get that centered up all you have to do is unbolt your head here pull it off flip it around and bolt it back down and you're at the exact perfect spot because this head is a mirror image of itself from one side to the other as far as the combustion chamber and the bolt pattern is concerned. You have the pushrod tubes over here, but it doesn't matter. As far as your bolt pattern is concerned and the shape of the combustion chamber, it's exactly the same on both sides. So, because they didn't leave as much meat in the casting here, you have to go to where, like you can see, I didn't even let the counter boring tool get all the way flat. You can see a little hickey right there where it didn't touch all the way. But there's enough there. You can see where the spark plug gasket's been touching it. There's enough there for it to seal, which is all the deeper you want to go, but then that just means you'll have to use a short reach plug, so you have a long reach plug and a short reach plug, which is fine. doesn't hurt anything, but um, yeah, I charge 50 bucks a head to do this, so $100, $100 for a pair of heads, and um, if you need this done, give me a call, and now I will demonstrate in more detail how this is done. You just thread the spark plug tap in there, and then we take it and put the head on our fixture here.
it went home. Now we take our retaining bolt, put our retaining bolt in there. And tighten it down. Now I'll have to put the camera down to do this next step, but you'll see how it works. Taken an old piece of, actually it's an old single-sided center drill. It's an extended type that was worn out, so um, it's in a collet. And then what you do is you just run it up next to whatever you're doing. And then... You look and see when it touches one edge or the other, and then when you shine a flashlight behind it, you can see that it's touching at the bottom. The camera's not showing it very well. When you're looking at this with a, there it goes. Y you can tell that it, the head has to go this way. You have to smack on the plate that way to get it to match up. So. I've already got the vise snug, so I will take a dead blow hammer and get that straight. But you see the principle here. When, when you get zero light behind there, you're, you're golden. Things aligned here, which they are, as the camera is sort of showing. All right, focuses. Okay, you can see that they're absolutely parallel with one another. And like I said, that close enough is good enough for this. So if, if you're where you can just see little slivers of light and you can't it doesn't look bigger at one end than it does at the other there might be some little ripples in there because the whole you know you got the flat section here and everything anyway you're, you're, you're good now what you want to do with that is is tighten your vise up and make sure that it doesn't move because some of them will this is a curt so it won't really anyway so then you take this away from it and now we're gonna take a tap center and I'll show you how to center that up um, so what we have here is the same thing as an edge finder, except it's got a point on the end of it. This is made by Starrett. I don't know if you can get any from any other companies. I've never personally seen them, but anyway, it's got a point on the end, and it'll wo wobble around just like a edge finder, except you don't have to run the machine to, and I, I wouldn't recommend running the machine to center this up. Anyway, you get it kind of centered with, or you know, where it's going to fall in that hole right there. Then. You run it around like so till it touches in there, and lock your spindle. And then you can feel which way it's off and which way it has to move. So then, what you do is you take your table locks and you just touch them, just snug them down so that you're going to have to exert some force on the handles to move it, but you don't want things creeping around once you tighten them up, which when you first, the first motion of you tightening it sometimes will. So, you, you see how to do this. I, I can't do it with one hand, but um, you feel this way, and you get it straight that way, and you feel this way to where you, you can't feel that separation anymore, and then you're, you're centered. Those are locked. What you want to do is... Unthread your spark plug tab. Hold on, I won't show you how to do this. Okay, unthread that. Unthread the spark plug tab. Then you unbolt this. And you lift your head up and flip it around 180 degrees to where you don't have a spark plug hole yet. And then we're going to make one. Here is I used a 3 8 end mill as my pilot drill. Which a two flute end mill will pilot a hole. So as long because you're cutting through fins and everything you can't at an angle you can't use a drill bit so you have to use something like this that'll stay centered and even though it's a long end mill if you're if you're careful with it I'll probably choke it up in the collet a little bit more if you're careful with it you don't have to use an end mill this long it'll be fine um, there is a ton of debate on the internet about whether you're using a 14 millimeter or a 12 millimeter or a 10 millimeter spark plug you can use whatever you want if you're going to use a 14 millimeter 3 8 is fine so to start your hole because you're going to need a half inch hole for the tap drill size. Now, I have yet to hear, hear from anybody that they've had problems with using 14 millimeter spark plugs. You're not going to tear the spark plug out unless you just over tighten the crap out of it or anything else. Uh, they're more readily available. 
I'm going to use the 14 millimeter spark plugs. So it's no big deal. So 3 8 is what we're going to start with. And then after that, we're going to put our spot facer in there and run the spot facer down to where we have a flat place for the half inch drill to start. You could also use a half inch end mill to do this. No big deal. Uh, I just happen to have a really good half inch drill bit that I only use for aluminum so it stays sharp and um, for operations such as this so i.e. we're gonna just use this and pilot the hole and then use the spot facer to give the drill a place to start and then once that's accomplished with a half inch hole then we can tell how big we have to make our spot face started in here and um, Let's see where it goes down through. It's kind of hard to tell. Anyway, WD-40 is your friend on this because otherwise the end mill will have trouble clearing the chips out when it's way down in there. So it'll load up a little bit. So you just use WD-40 on it. I was running at about 1,000 RPM. Seems about right. And now on to the spot facer. Here's the finished product. And um, this is both the heads are done. Now what I did was is I took a... Uh, I'll show you. I took one of the short reach spark plugs to clearance the threads. And this is a long reach, but you'll see what's going on. Uh, with a normal spark plug, you'll see where the threads stop here. And so that's where you want your threads to stop in your cylinder head when this is tightened all the way down. So what I did was I took it on the lathe, and you can do it with a grinder or whatever. I wish this would focus. Okay, there we go. And you just cut it off right there. Where my thumbnail is, so that all that's in here, all that's in here, is uh, just the threaded portion of the spark plug, and that's how when I take a Dremel tool and put it in here and clearance the threads, I can just butt up against this and because it's steel, I'm not going to chew into my good threads here that I still want. So all you got to do is just take the Dremel tool and just round off the points of the threads and all your sharp edges here and then you won't have any detonation. So if you need this done, uh, give me a call 812-459-5657 as for Gordy and uh, I will be happy to do this for you. Like I said, it's $100 for a pair of cylinder heads and um, you'll have to make some modification to your ignition system but uh, that's for another video so uh, here we go